Hello, I'm Dr. Pamela Ruig, Extension Milk Quality Veterinarian with the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And today in our ongoing series about mastitis, we're going to be discussing how to prevent and manage cows that develop chronic mastitis infections. Now whenever I discuss this topic, the first question that I almost always get is how do you define a cow that has a chronic mastitis infection? And there's really two different ways that we can make a definition of a chronic cow. The first step, or the first way to identify them would be that cow that has a chronic subclinical mastitis infection. Now remember subclinical mastitis from a previous episode? That's the type of mastitis where the cow has a bacterial infection of the udder, but the, mel the appearance of the milk is perfectly normal. In these instances, our only uh, indication that she's infected is the migration of these immune cells, these somatic cells, to the udder. And when the number of these somatic cells in the udder exceeds about 200,000 cells per mil, then we, we can assume that that cow has a mastitis infection. Those mastitis infections are typically characterized as chronic. When a cow has two consecutive months in a single lactation or more, where the, where the value exceeds 200,000 cells. So that's the working definition of a chronic subclinical mastitis infection. We also get then the question of what about those cows with clinical cases of mastitis? Remember clinical mastitis? That's those infections where the in inflammation as a result of the infection has progressed to a point where the milk actually looks abnormal. Definition for, for a chronic clinical um, uh, case of mastitis would be when a cow has more than about um, two episodes of clinical mastitis within a single lactation. So the definition is very similar. Two m consecutive months with a cell count above 200,000 or two episodes of abnormal milk and we call that cow a chronic cow. So after we find these cows or after we arrive at a definition of what a chronic cow is, then we have to make sure that we can consistently find these cows or identify these cows in the herd. And to do that, we have to make sure we have individual monthly somatic cell count values for the cow. And uh, to find the clinical cases, we've got to make sure we've got a recording system for those cows. So most importantly, have a definition, have monthly individual cow somatic cell count values, and make sure that all cases of clinical mastitis are recorded. That'll start us to be able to start managing these chronic cases because that'll start us toward being able to identify the problem cows. Sometimes after we identify the chronically infected cows, it becomes overwhelming on how to think about dealing with them. But in reality, there's only six options that are even feasible for dealing with any individual cow. The first option would be to consider a treatment of that cow. The second option would be to segregate that cow and continue milking her, but keep her away from the healthy cows so that she doesn't have the opportunity to um, infect those cows. The third option would be to dry off the chronically affected cow, and we would use that option for a cow that's in late lactation and um, would have a slightly longer dry period. We'd use that option as well um, to protect the healthy cows from the milk that would come from an infected cow. The fourth option would not be to dry off the cow, but simply to dry off the chronically affected quarter. This is often an option that's feasible for a cow that has a single quarter infection and is otherwise healthy. The fifth option would be to um, quarter milk that cow, and quarter milking is jargon. It basically means that we uh, milk the affected quarter into a separate little receptacle, a quarter milker, and discard that milk so that it doesn't go into the food supply or it doesn't come in contact with the teats of other healthy cows. And then the sixth option, which should be reserved for some cows, is to cull those cows. Now I don't have time to discuss in depth um, in this episode all of these potential options, but uh, I will discuss a few of them and I want to start with number one, treatment of subclinical mastitis. When we think about treatment, you have to, we have to recognize that it's almost never cost-effective to solve chronic subclinical mastitis infections 
um, by treatment of these cows. Now that seems kind of counterintuitive, but the reason it's true is um, in our conventional herds who are allowed to use antibiotics for treatment of these um, infected cows, the animals with the chronic infections are actually the animals that have the lowest probability of responding successfully to those treatments. So our treatments often aren't um, completely successful in these cows, and we have to discard this melt from these cows during the treatment period and, and the withholding period, and thus it's very costly to treat these cows. So it's rarely recommended, and only recommended typically on the advice of your veterinarian. Second reason we don't always recommend treatment is because in our organic dairy herds who can't, um, who can't use antibiotics, there's really no approved drugs that have been proven to be effective to treat these chronically affected cows. So the use of treatments wouldn't be recommended in these instances either. Another important option for managing these cows that I want to discuss is the willingness to cull some of these cows. In other words, remove them from production. Many of these cows that develop chronic subclinical mastitis infections are infected with the type of bacteria which won't respond to any treatments. And it won't go away spontaneously. Cows that are infected with bacteria such as chronic Staph aureus infections, or cows that are infected with Mycoplasma bovis um, are cows that uh, simply are not going to respond to any of the available treatments and those cows simply should be culled. There's also some cows that have characteristics themselves that indicate that treatment is unlikely to be successful. Those would be cows that have several quarters that are infected with chronic infections or cows that have had multiple episodes where their milk has been abnormal. In other words, multiple episodes of clinical mastitis. Additionally, cows that have damage to their teat sphincters, the very end of their teats, the number one defense against infection, those cows are very unlikely to be able to maintain healthy udders. And in all of those instances, culling of those cows is probably the best option for economically managing the dairy herd. So we've got six options for dealing with these chronically infected cows, and really none of them are ideal because they all indicate really losses, losses for the cows and losses for the owner. And when we think about that in these chronically infected cows, we have to recognize that it's always more cost effective to prevent mastitis rather than to treat it or deal with these chronically infected cows. So really one of the things we should be looking for after we identify chronic mastitis in our herd is what is the point of exposure and how can we reduce the development of new chronic infections. Now there's several ways that cows can become exposed to mastitis pathogens, but basically what we want to look for is when do the teats of healthy cows become exposed to bacteria that, be, that came from chronically infected udders. And one of the places to look is during the milking process. When we take milking units off of chronically infected cows and we put those same milking units onto healthy udders, we really risk the transmission of those bacteria from the chronically affected cows into the healthy cows. So we really want to look at minimizing that possibility. Another good practice that we can work on to reduce the development of chronically infected cows is to make sure we have excellent post-milking teat dipping programs. So we want to make sure that 75% of the teat skin is covered with an effective post-milking teat disinfectant at the termination of every milking. We also need to look at potential environmental sources of these mastitis pathogens, minimizing the exposure of teats to bacteria that come from bedding sources, um, such as wet or moist um, uh, organic matter that the cows lie down on in a confinement housing, or we need to look into our pasture operations and look for areas that are wet um, or muddy, or even areas that potentially are overgrazed where there isn't, um, uh, where there is uh, contact of the teats to bare ground or perhaps um, uh, dirt.
So really, the take home point is that the development of these chronic cows is an indication that we haven't done a good enough job at preventing transmission of these bacteria. And we really want to look at identifying the sources. So finally, we've talked about the, the, the importance of defining chronic mastitis in our cows and our herds, and then identifying all the cows that have these chronic mastitis infections. After we've identified the chronic infections, we need to make individual cow decisions, looking at all six of those options for the cows and deciding uh, which of the options is best based on the type of bacteria and the characteristics of the cow. I'd really encourage everyone, as they work through this process of dealing with these chronically infected cows, to work with your local, in, uh, local veterinarians. These local veterinarians can be a great resource for putting in place preventive um, care programs. Music